This is Purple Roof Podcast and audio articles giving you the latest news and research from the green roof industry. My name is Anna Sakrisen and this is the audio version of my article Green Roof Plants, How Do They Survive? Part 2 of 2. Plants and Retention and Detention Green roof vegetation isn't there just to look pretty, it has a job to do and that is to transpire. When plants transpire, water is lost from the soil, preparing it to absorb the next storm. The combined water loss from the soil and the vegetation is called evapotranspiration. And this is the primary process by which green roofs retain stormwater. Annual retention is 20 to 40% better with full vegetation compared with open soils. With a foliage canopy alone adding an approximately 10% retention bonus to the cake. Healthy foliage is critical for detention through vertical and lateral resistance to flow. When it rains, water drops come down at an average speed of around 30 km per hour, which is approximately 20 miles per hour. The canopy of leaves dissipates that energy as it bounces on the flexible leaves, allowing water to trickle along the stems or gently drop onto the floor below the vegetative canopy. As it gathers volume on the soil floor, water seeks a path of least resistance and lateral friction created by the dense vegetation keeps it in place longer, allowing it to stand and giving it time to percolate. For these reasons, year-round foliage coverage is crucial to effective stormwater management on green roofs. Full winter coverage due to the use of rudral species is critical to prevent winter soil and plant desiccation, and year-round plant coverage is needed to prevent the wind from blowing soil and much-needed organic particle off the roof. Foliage is the skin that protects the content. Plants and Nutrients Plants require three macronutrients for growth, and that is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Micronutrients needed for plant and microbial growth include iron, boron, chlorine, manganese, zinc, copper, molybdenum, and nickel. Nitrogen and green roof plants. Nitrogen comes in many forms, such as nitrate, ammonium, and amino acids, and many more. Nitrate, in comparison to ammonium, moves easily through the soil and can thus be leached and lost from the roofs. However, nitrate makes up the main proportion of plant-available nitrogen, making nitrate a double-edged sword for green roofs as we need to strike a careful balance to ensure there is enough of this essential nutrient available to plants without having so much that excess is leached in the runoff. Too much nitrate fertilizer applied can end in very little benefit on the roof and very much harm downstream. Plant nitrogen availability is determined by the net rate at which inorganic nitrogen, nitrate is the most relevant form in our case, is replenished. That means the soil could theoretically have a high total nitrogen content, But if it's the wrong form of nitrogen, the plants can still suffer from nitrogen starvation. Nitrogen fertilization can also have profound effect on root and shoot morphology and ratios, with higher nitrogen inputs leading to a significant increase in root growth. This has often been interpreted as more is more. However, research now shows that too much nitrogen can have negative effects on plant growth. It is thus vital to find the best balance between the nitrogen concentrations needed for optimal growth while at the same time ensuring that nitrogen is not lost in the runoff. The best way to achieve this is through the establishment of soil biology that is healthy and stable in order to minimize the amount of fertilization needed. We don't want a high maintenance roof. We want a roof that takes care of itself for free. And the key to this we believe, is soil biology. Phosphorus and green roof plants. 
Phosphorus is needed for many fundamental biological processes, for example, as part of the backbone of our genetic material. Phosphorus is also part of the energetic currency, the adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, of biological systems. Phosphorus is mainly available to plants as phosphate, and this nutrient has been the most difficult one to retain on the roof. Many studies show green roofs as phosphorus sources, as most soil media contain phosphorus-rich compost as a component. The lost phosphate is a significant environmental problem, as this nutrient is one of the main causes of algal blooms and eutrophication in lakes, streams and estuaries. Luckily, there are many ongoing studies currently tackling this issue. Once again, solutions will involve the biology of the soil, combined with some nifty engineering approaches. Often, the most novel approaches appear on the borders between our topics. Potassium and green roof plants. Potassium is a different type of macronutrient compared to nitrogen or phosphorus. It doesn't become incorporated into the plant tissues the same way, but is involved in many critical enzymatic processes. Potassium is also needed for guard cell or stomata regulation. Thus, plants with potassium deficiency often become slow in their responses to changing hydrological conditions, with a sluggish closing of the plant's water loss valves upon drought resulting in a heightened drought sensitivity. The importance of nutrient ratios. Plants need sufficiently high concentrations of these macronutrients to grow at maximum capacity, but they also need these nutrients in optimal ratios. Ecological nutrient ratios are determined through stoichiometry, defined as the balance of multiple chemical substances in ecological interactions and processes, or the study of this balance. Nutrient ratios vary based on an organism's specific nutritional needs. Nonetheless, within ecological compartments, these ratios are reasonably constant. This consistency enables us to make predictions of when a nutrient becomes limiting in a system. A limiting nutrient is to be compared with a sports car with a full tank and three wheels. Wheels will be the limiting factor in this case. No matter how much fuel you add, the speed of the car is limited by the number of wheels. The same is true for plants. No matter how much nitrogen or phosphate you add to a plant, it will still not grow optimally if it's lacking in potassium. Nitrogen and phosphorus must also be balanced. Plants are generally thought to become nitrogen limited when the N to P ratio falls below 14 and phosphorus limited when the ratios are above 16. A diverse, stable and resilient roof. Plant diversity matters! Without plant diversity, the roof is unable to buffer for environmental changes. Rural plants for fast colonialization and deep-rooted plants for higher drought resilience. Also, diversity makes the roof more resilient to pests. If all plants are of the same type and an illness strikes, all of them might die. If there's a mixture of species, there will be most likely be some survivors that can take the opportunity to spread and thrive. But how can we prevent pests from striking in the first place? Pests and green roof plants. During which part of your life did you get the most infections? If you'd allow me to make a qualified guess, I'd probably say it has been during times of high stress, mentally and or physically, if we sleep little, eat poorly and stress a lot, we just simply tend to get sick, right? In a way, this is also the case for plants, though their stress looks different. Plant stress can be things like too little or too much water, high UV radiation, too much shade, too little or too much nutrients, or nutrients in the wrong ratios. Usually, one moderate stressor won't crash a system, but if several of them come together, well, you just simply end up with sick plants. Often we applied pesticides and hope for the best. However, if the stressor aren't being dealt with, we are just postponing the situation. As an example, we were once asked to remove grubs that were eating up the green roofs in Montgomery County. Instead of applying pesticides, we recommended that we needed to remove plant stress. 
You remove plant stress and the plants themselves can deal with the grubs. Pesticides fix the system short term but mess it up even more long term. Pesticides are not only expensive but end up in downstream water bodies which may destroy local ecosystems and risk violating local environmental regulations. Furthermore, the symbiotic relationship between the plants and microbes such as mycorrhiza might be killed by broad spectrum pesticides. Destruction of these types of symbiosis means lower water and nutrient availability for the plants which in turn means more stress. It's like applying a band-aid on a gaping wound. We are much better off taking a close look at what is stressing the plants in the first place and let's focus on sustainability. So how, how can I de-stress my plants? So where do we start? How can you know if your plants are stressed? Most of us already have enough other stresses in our lives to worry about a roof full of pet plants. Continuously having to check your roof is simply not acceptable as it would transfer the stress from the plants to you. Stressing the building owners with high maintenance costs and time consuming checks is not a good solution. The solution is instead to create a roof that is resilient, stable and less prone to crash or collapse in the first place. A sustainable roof takes care of itself and stays that way for decades with only minimal maintenance. The key is to have a healthy soil ecosystem that is matched with the vegetation selected to your climatic region. Let's make nature work for us for free. The making of a resilient roof. So how do we make the plants happy? We can't do anything about the rainfall, how the seasons come and go, or when the sun sets and rises, but we can adapt to the conditions. We can choose the right plants for the right region, and most importantly, we can improve the soil. There is so much opportunity ahead, so much opportunity to make green roofs go from great to fantastic. Currently, German set standards, FLL, determine how one-size-fits-all green roof soils are being put together in climates ranging from the prairie to Chicago to the welcome lake effects of Toronto to the snow and cold of Montreal or to the humid and subtropical climate of Virginia. We can do better than this. Improving soil health will increase stormwater retention and detention and ensure stable and resilient vegetation. It is a crucial and often forgotten factor in the green roof industry. Luckily, this is an upcoming topic that we think will bring much good to the industry as a whole. That concludes part two of my article, Green Roof Plans, What's Their Success? Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, you can contact us as always per email at info at purpleminusroof.com or through our website contact forum. And don't forget to subscribe to us if you're interested in Green Roof news and research because you can find us in all the major podcast directories such as iTunes or Spotify and follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. My name is Anna Sarkreason and this is Purple Roof Podcast and audio articles bringing you the latest news and research from the Green Roof industry.